Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about both positive and negative signs, which if used correctly, can give you a better idea as to whether or not you're able to get off of your thyroid medication. This is a follow-up to other videos I've done on getting off of thyroid medication, and we're just gonna go over this in a little more detail. So if you are a thyroid patient who is doesn't like the idea of taking thyroid medication forever, this is going to be really, really helpful information. So let's first start with the positive signs. Now, for reference, if you have any of these markers, that is a good thing and it means that there is a higher likelihood that if you were to go off your thyroid medication, your thyroid would return to normal. So let's talk about these one by one and I'll kind of explain what, they, what the greater implication is of the statement. So let's talk about the first one. Number one is if you have been on thyroid medication for less than four years, that's a good sign very good sign if you've been on it now this is really just saying hey people who are who are who are getting off their thyroid medication who haven't been on it for um, a long period of time are in an early stage of whatever thyroid disease that they have and that's generally better than if you had thyroid disease for 20 plus years that's all that's saying the next one is you have a normal free t4 on diagnosis now this is important because lots of thyroid patients if they'll get diagnosed at different stages of their disease. So if you are caught early, now generally speaking, the earlier you catch your disease, the fewer thyroid lab abnormalities that will be present. So this is again, kind of hearkening back to this idea, if you catch your disease early, that's better, right? Okay, that makes sense. Now, in the case of a, a TSH, if only your TSH is abnormal and you don't have and a low free T4, which does happen as the disease progresses, then you're just catching it more early. Now, it could be one of two things here. It could be the fact that you have a really bad case of hypothyroidism if you do have a low free T4 on diagnosis, or it could be the case that you just caught your disease a little bit later. So for instance, maybe you've been feeling bad for several years and you finally go to the doctor and your doctor's like, whoa, you have hypothyroidism really badly. That doesn't mean you have a bad case. That just means you should have been treated a year ago. So you kind of have to tease that out. Again, having these positive signs doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to get off your medication, just like having some of the negative signs doesn't guarantee that you'll have to stay on your thyroid medication, which is why I'm just sort of explaining some of these in a little more detail. The next one is you have a current TSH of less than 1.8. So if you are on thyroid medication being treated and your TSH is less than 1.8, that is a good sign uh, because it implies that your disease state is controlled. That's really all we're saying. Hey, if we give you thyroid medication, your TSH stays stable, and that's a good sign because it means you're not fluctuating all over the place. It means there's not something else that is, is missing there, maybe some other disease state, or maybe you have um, alternating thyroid function from an infection or uh, inflammation in the gland, whatever, right? That's a good sign. The next one is you are, you're on a low dose of thyroid prescription medication. So the lower the dose, generally the better it is because it implies that you have a more mild case of hypothyroidism. Now, there, we don't have a, a specific cutoff here, but based off of what I've seen, it looks like anything less than 50 micrograms of level thyroxine or synthroid. Now, this would also equate to probably about three-fourths of a grain if you're using something like Armour Thyroid, NP Thyroid, Adthyza, whatever, any type of, N, any type of NDT formulation. Um, but the lower dose, the lower the dose that you're on, the better, generally speaking. Now, um, then the last one here talks about gender, and that is women. So women, lucky for you, you have about a two times more like or higher likelihood of getting off of thyroid medication compared to men. It's not really clear why that is, but you know, if you're a woman, and most of my audience, they are women, so good for you that you got that one going for you automatically. Now I will say by the way I didn't I didn't specify this in the beginning but a lot of this information is still emerging we're still learning more so this is what we know right now and it is subject to change and that's a good sign because if this changes in the future one I'll notify you and two it just means that more research is being done on this idea of getting people off of thyroid medication which again is great because we don't want people to be on thyroid medication if they don't have to. All right, now let's go over the negative signs. If any of these are present, this is bad, okay? So this, it again, doesn't guarantee that you won't be able to get off your thyroid medication, but these, generally speaking, are not the things that you wanna have, want, want to be inside of your body, or want to occur inside of your body. 
Okay, number one is a heterogeneous thyroid on ultrasound. Now, heterogeneous just refers to the way that the radiologist describes your thyroid gland. Don't let it confuse you. It's it's not that confusing. It, it's, a, it's just medical jargon and medical lingo. And it's just a way to describe what a thyroid gland looks like if it has Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. So all this is saying essentially is, hey, if you have Graves or um, Graves or Hashis on ultrasound, that's generally not a good thing. And the reason is because there are many cases of Graves and Hashimoto's which do not show physical changes on your thyroid ultrasound. So in other words, you can have positive antibodies and still have Hashimoto's, but they're not actually seen on the thyroid gland. So this implies that there is, you're probably, in a, you have a more aggressive uh, condition or a more aggressive version of Graves or Hashimoto's. The next one is you have positive TPO antibodies with diffuse echogenicity. Again, this is an echogeni the diffuse echogenicity is just a way to describe your thyroid gland on thyroid ultrasound, and it just means that it encompasses the entire thyroid gland. So again, don't get confused uh, or alarmed by this, this lingo. It, it's really kind of simple. It's just saying, hey, if you have positive TPO antibodies and your entire thyroid gland is impacted on ultrasonography, that's a bad sign. Okay, fair enough. That just means you probably have a more um, advanced disease. If your TSH is greater than eight at diagnosis, that is a bad sign. This just kind of going back to what we what we said in the beginning, if you have a higher TSH, you're more likely to have a more advanced type of hypothyroidism. That's basically it in a nutshell. And the higher your TSH is at diagnosis, the less likely you, you are to get off thyroid medication because the more likely your disease is to be aggressive, which means it may result in permanent thyroid gland damage. Next one is a baseline TSH of greater than nine. Now baseline TSH is different from your TSH at diagnosis, which we just talked about. The baseline TSH refers more to where your TSH is when you're being treated with thyroid medication. So all this is saying is, hey, if your TSH is, is nine and you're taking thyroid medication, something's going on. We're not really sure what, but that's not a good sign, all right? So if your TSH is fluctuating all over the place and it tends to be on the higher side, because nine is pretty high if you're taking thyroid medication, that's, that's not a good sign. Um, that's, that's not a good sign for, for, for A, your thyroid, or for B, your, your chances of getting off of your thyroid medication. The next one is, if you have been diagnosed at a young age. Now the age isn't specified here. I tried to, tried to find that for you. It's, it's not actually specified. So we'll just say in general, the younger you are at diagnosis, the, the worse off you are, uh, generally speaking. And probably because if you're diagnosed when you're 20 and let's say you're 50 now, well, whatever was going on in your body has been going on for 30 years. Now, hopefully, hopefully many of you listening to this um, have caught your disease much earlier than that and have been aware of it for hopefully less than, let's say four or five years, because that's what we were talking about up here. Four years, that seems to be a pretty good um, cutoff range for, for a positive sign. And then lastly, if you have a positive thyroglobulin antibody at diagnosis. Now again, this just harkens back to this whole idea of Graves and Hashimoto's. This particular antibody can be associated with both. Now in the case of hypothyroidism, we're really talking about Hashimoto's predominantly, but um, which is this antibody can be associated with that condition. Now I will also say this is kind of important to, uh, to understand here as a patient. From the conventional side of things, doctors are, they, they, they don't really believe that Hashimoto's is a treatable condition. They believe that almost always it will result in permanent thyroid gland damage. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that's not how I what I believe or think, which is why I talk a lot about these natural treatments and trying to put your Hashimoto's into remission. But you'll see sort of the bias of how they look at these autoimmune diseases come out in these negative signs. But don't take this as if you have any of these as no matter what, you're not gonna be able to get off your medication. It just means you're less likely. So these are just the signs. By the way, I have tons of more information talking about how to actually get off your thyroid medication. So if you've looked at these signs and you're trying to figure out, well, hey, what should I do next? My recommendation is to still give it a try with your doctor to see, because you never know. Even if you have a lot of negative signs, there's still a possibility you could get off. And if you're looking to do that, check out my video, which describes how to get off of thyroid medication next.